this video lesson we're going to have a look at data table. Data tables are part of the what if analysis that makes spreadsheets really powerful. We've got a simple calculation on the screen. It is about calculating what our repayment might be if we're borrowing some money from the bank. Perhaps our loan amount is 50,000. You know the bank will charge us 3% interest and we need to repay that over 240 months. This calculation tells us how much we will need to repay each month. If I click onto the cell, you'll be able to see the formula that I've used here. Now I'm not going to explain what this means. I have a, a video about the financial uh, calculations that are available in Excel, so you might want to go and have a look at those. The actual calculation here doesn't matter. We could just have in there A1 times B1, and the data table would work in exactly the same way. So just to note that I'm using a PMT, which is a payment function, to calculate what the payment will be if I've borrowed 50,000 at 3% interest. And of course, the beauty of spreadsheets is if I go to a different bank and they quote me 2%, I can change that value. And when I press enter, the calculation automatically updates pounds. Or I could change my loan amount to 40,000 and it's automatically updated. The problem there is that it's difficult to remember those combinations and those values. So we can use a data table to lay out all this information with those changes already in. So we're going to start with having a look at the data table now. The first point is what we're going to be looking at is changing the interest rate value at 4%. So what we need to do is write out some different interest rates. I'm going to start with 1% and then I select the cells that I want to fill. I can then, on the Home tab, choose Fill from the Editing section. And I'm just going to Fill Series. And this dialog box allows me to make all kinds of changes. I'm just going to gloss over it and say, what is the step value? So I want my interest rates to go up in, in quarter of a percent, which is 0.0025. So when I click on OK, Excel immediately fills the cells that I had selected with a series of uh, figures that are going up in a one quarter of 1% each time. So we have our interest rates. The next step is to use the calculation. Now the calculation needs to go in the cell to the right and one above your variable interest rates. What has often confused people using data tables in the past is that the calculation is often already there. But that doesn't matter. That calculation is actually no part of the data table. It's only there to sort of demonstrate the process, if you will. So what we need to do in this cell in C6 is recreate this function. So again, I'm not going to tell you sort of how this function works other than talk through the, the build-up of it. So I'm looking for a repayment. My interest rate is 4%, but it's, I want to know per month, so I need to divide it by 12. NPR is the number of payments, so I'll select the number of payments, which is 240. And PV is the present value of the loan, 60,000. So I'm just using those cell references inside this function. See there now, in the formula bar, that I have the function available. What the next step is, to tell this function to replace this 4% figure, which is in cell B2, instead of using B2, I want to use this cell, and then this cell, and then this cell. So what we do is select the area that we're working with, which is the formula, and all the interest rates. Then, using the data tab, we can come to the data tools section and choose the what if analysis. That gives us three options, but we're going to come down to data table and we get this dialog box that asks us to input either the row input cell or the column input cell. People get confused which to use. I find this straightforward. 
the interest rates, the ones that I want to substitute into the formula, are in a column. They're going vertically up and down. So therefore, we're looking at a column input cell. And all this is asking us is saying, which cell do we want to substitute? But the cell we want to, to substitute is B2. That was the interest rate. So I've put B2 into that cell. And just by clicking there, it puts into the cell and makes it absolute. But what's going to happen is, when I click on OK, the data table will take the value of 1%, substitute it into the value that is in B2. It will then take the value of 1.25% and substitute it into the value of B2, etc. So we'll click on OK. And there we can see the, the calculation that has been done. And as the interest rates go higher, up to 4%, so the repayment value gets higher. Because what the calculation has done is taken this formula and inserted 1% into the B2 value. 1.25% into the B2 value, 1.5% into the B2 value, etc. So I'll just repeat that again. We've got our column of variable interest rates. We put the formula above and to the right. We select the whole range. Then, what if analysis on the data tools section, data tables, our interest rate or our variable number is in a column, so therefore we're using the column input cell and we want to replace the values in B2 with those interest rates. And OK. And there's the variable amounts of repayments. Of course, we can do this the other way around. We've looked at a column input. We can have a row input. Works exactly the same way. I'm just going to take these interest rates, and copy them and make them go across the row. So I'm just going to use Paste Special and use Transpose. Again, there's been another video about using Paste Special. And then click on OK. And it's copied those, but made them go, transpose them into a row rather than a column. I can then get rid of these original figures. The only difference when we're working with a row is where we put the formula. And the formula now goes to the left and one down. If you remember, it was that pay payment formula, but it works on anything. It doesn't have to be a formula this complex. It could simply be A1 times B1, for example. So you can see the way that's laid out. Simply select the whole range. What if analysis on the data tools, data table. This time we've got a row input. The variation of numbers is in a row. So we're using the row input cell. But we're still changing those numbers into the value of B2. Click on OK. And there's the change in our repayment values. We've been creating a um, simple data table. Um, but this next step is really what data table is about. It's about doing it in two dimensionals rather than just the one. And you can see what we've got here is a, a change in interest rates. But I'm also going to look at a change in loan amount as well. It allows us to bring up a much better um, table of results, if you will. And the only difference here is where we put our formula. And we put the formula in the intersection between the row and the column. So I'm going to put the payment formula in here. Once again, I'll keep telling you this, the formula doesn't matter. If you don't know how to use this formula, it does not matter. Um, oops, that's divided by 12. Uh, 240 and 60,000. Okay. So we've put our formula there. Works in exactly the same way. We select the whole range. On the data tab, from the data tool section, we use what if analysis and select data table. And we simply input the row and column input cells. So the row, the row, is coming across. That's our interest rate. So we want to change these numbers and use these numbers instead of the 4%, which is in B2. So we put B2 in the row input cell. The column input cell, there's the column of changes. And we want to use these numbers instead of the loan amount in B1. So we select B1. 
we're going to substitute into that formula the values in this row instead of B2 and the values in this column instead of B1. We then select OK. And there you can see the results, which basically means if we go to a bank and we want to borrow 30,000 and the bank decides they would charge us 2.5%, we know that our repayment would be £158 per month. If we want to borrow 70,000 at an interest rate of 3.5%, we need to repay £405 per month.